Welcome once again to the Influencers Podcast. We are here to see the influence of your life grow. You have been equipped by your father to be a victor. Hi, my friend Scott Young here with the Influencers Podcast and our great co-host Dave Donaldson is on the line. He's going to join us today and we are going to have a fascinating discussion. Peter Palavos loves God, loves his family, including his wife, his children, his grandchildren, and loves his country. He is recognized as an international attorney and philanthropist. You may have heard his name. He's been involved in some huge cases, including the lead counsel against the People's Republic of China for damages brought on by COVID-19. Over a trillion dollars sought in that case. He is also a deep man of faith. He's been honored by Pope John Paul II. He's been honored for his commitment to the poor to help those who are needing help. He's a great love for veterans, and we're going to be talking about that today. He is the chairman of the Voice of the Veterans, which really helps veterans and their families live a better lifestyle. Uh, He institutes programs that are beneficial and proven track records, such as Vets Helping Vets, Educational uh, Initiatives, and others. And we're glad to welcome you, Peter, to the Influencers Podcast. We're here to see people's influence grow and develop and we know you have lived a life of influence thanks for joining us pleasure to be with you scott and pleasure to be with my friend dave donaldson well folks you know just when you think you have a big vision and that you're already stretched god sends into your life somebody with a bigger vision to stretch you even more You're about to meet that man, Peter Polivos. And so he and I have become very close friends over the years. Uh, A few years ago, uh, we put on an event in Vegas uh, to honor veterans, uh, but also to serve them. Over 200 families, uh, CityServe was able to provide furniture. Uh, I think you know a lot of these veterans are living below the poverty line. The their homes are dilapidated, living rooms despicable. And so we sought to change that. And then uh, Peter invited me to a Las Vegas Raider game, a 50-yard line, which is huge for me. I grew up a Raider fan. My dad was a huge Raider fan. And Scott, you're a pastor. You might want to cover your ears. But my dad, he would end the service early at times to get home to watch the Raiders. And so uh, we're there, 50-yard line, and Peter brings up the idea of doing something bigger to not only honor but serve our veterans and military families in a city Hmm. uh, which uh, is the most populous of veterans, but also uh, one of the the most stricken, if you will, uh, with depression, suicide. Hmm. And so uh, he mentioned the idea of, hey, what about doing an event right here in Allegiant Stadium where the Super Bowl was, the most coveted venue in America. And so uh, the rest is history. We met with the uh, president, who's a close friend of Peter, president of the Raiders, uh, and then serendipitously with Mark Davis, the owner. And so on June 8th, Uh, This is going to be an historic uh, event there at Allegiant Stadium uh, to serve, to honor 15,000. You heard me right, 15,000 military families and veterans. So, Peter, uh, you and Vicky, two of our closest friends, and I want to start out by asking you this question. uh, Where does your love and appreciation and honor where veterans and military families come from. Where does that come from? Uh, Thank you for your kind words, Dave, and you are a good friend, and you do great things for our country. Um, We have love of country and love of God at the center of our life because that's how we were raised by our Christian parents. We were very blessed to have wonderful parents. And uh, I'm a fifth I come from five generations of military service on my mother's side. 
my uh, grandfather's two older brothers were miners in Ely, Nevada in 1917 when the U.S. Army drafted them to serve in the Army during World War I. And hence, that began the first generation of service from our family. Subsequently, family members served in World War II. My mother's brother, Uncle Peter, served in the Korean War. My cousin served in Vietnam. And then my cousin, uh, Commander Grimes, served in the Afghan. So when you have five generations of military service in your family, it's in our DNA that we understand what service a country means. We understand what sacrifice for country means. Do you think, uh, Peter, that Americans really understand or appreciate the depth of sacrifice that our military families and military servicemen and women have put into our nation? Uh, most do. Um, you know, the magic number is 1%. Currently, 1% of Americans serve in the military. So a lot of uh, Americans love our country, and that love uh, spills over into love of the military. We must be very clear. We are the world's number one military power and the world's number one economy. And those two are correlated. When you have a strong military internationally, you're respected and you have a strong economy. And uh, most Americans, because we love our country, we love our military because we understand that the military is the backbone to our strength. Peter, uh, you and I have a dear friend named Dan. Uh, his helicopter was shot down uh, tw twice. Let me uh, Christian, let me start that again. Uh, you and I have a dear friend. You introduced me to Dan. Uh, his helicopter was shot down twice in Vietnam. Uh, we're going to be honoring him along with other veterans on June 8th. Tell us Dan's story. Um, so Dan Peterson is a, a very unique and great American. He's a highly decorated war hero. He was a pilot during Vietnam, uh, and he was uh, when he was drafted. And uh, almost within weeks, he was shot down twice as he flew the Apache helicopter. And he was flying in to uh, drop off troops and pick up wounded troops. And he was shot down twice. And in both of those uh, crashes, he was injured. And uh, he could have very easily quit the fight. Uh, he has served our country. He was shot down twice. He was injured twice, and he could have left. Instead, he stayed in the Army. And subsequently, believe it or not, he was shot down four more times. So he survived six crashes. And uh, I once asked him, uh, Danny, what was it that drove you to keep on going back? And his words were, love a country and service a country. Where did the, the seed thought come from? You had this conversation with Dave. Hey, what about honoring the veterans in this uh, historic venue in Las Vegas? When did that idea first come through your mind? And what do you want to see happen? What, what's going to happen? And what do you want to see happen on June the 8th, upcoming, very short? That's a great question. Uh, truly, there's a secret that very few people talk about. Uh, we're upside down as a country. Uh, we're, we're divided. In my humble opinion, we're too divided. Um, we have 23 veterans commit suicide a day. Depression's up. Anxiety's up in the military and veteran community. And people ask why. And the answer is simple. Uh, we, we send these men and women to serve our country and they go into very hostile environments. And in today's global geopolitical scenes, uh, it's very dangerous. People th shoot bombs at you. They, they have machine guns, they have tanks. And many of these uh, war heroes come back wounded. Mm. Uh, they come back wounded Physically, many of them have wounds. Uh, they lose arms. They lose legs. They lose legs. Let me do that again. They come back wounded, and they have psychological and physical harms. Many of them have PTSD. Hmm. Many of them have lost arms and legs. Um, and then 
we need to do more for these American heroes because we must remember they served our country because we asked them to serve our country. And when they come back, we need to do more. And I remember the words of President John Kennedy, who himself was an American war hero during World War II. He was a Navy hero. President Kennedy had once said, it's good to tell Americans who serve our country, thank you for your service. But we need to do more. We need to back that with deeds. And that's consistent with our Christian values. Jesus yeah. told us the same thing. We need to do good deeds as Christians for others. And um, so one day uh, we were at a Raiders game with my good friend, Pastor Dave Donaldson. And uh, as we sat there and enjoyed uh, the Raiders game, uh, I said to myself, you know, this is wonderful because this is a great country. And it's a great country because I come from a poor background. Uh, my first job at seven years old was shoe shining shoes in my father's store. So if you ever need a real good shoe shine, <laughs> come on over and see me. And uh, through the, the beauty and the greatness of this country, because we are the land of opportunity, I was blessed to do a lot of good in my life and to have incredible and unprecedented support and success. So Dave and I are sitting at the Raiders game at the 50-yard line, and as I looked around, I had a vision. And the vision was many of our war heroes, many of our wounded warriors, many of our veterans can never sit where we're sitting because these are expensive tickets. Through the grace of God, I'm able to afford these tickets. But many war heroes, many veterans cannot. Mm -hmm. So I, I told Dave, I said, Dave, you know, we've done a lot of good together, a lot of wonderful events for veterans in our military. Let's take it to another level. Let's do an event for 15,000 veterans and military leaders. And when I looked at Dave, I, first I thought he was going to faint. He was, he was shocked. <laughs> and then when we started talking about it, he said, you know, I kind of love the idea. Do you think we could do this? And I said, yeah, I think we could do this. Uh, we got to get the stadium for free. We got to raise millions of dollars, but I think we could do this. And the rest is history. So what's going to happen on June the 8th? Who are you bringing together into that stadium? Um, we've invited uh, all the active military families from Nevada, anyone who served our country, um, veterans, members of the National Guard, and uh, we've kept it uh, it's 15,000 people, and we're going to be sold out, mm -hmm. uh, which is really important, Scott, because this is a telling fact. When we started this event, many of the naysayers said it's impossible. You cannot get 15,000 people in Nevada anywhere unless it's an entertainment show. And here we are almost uh, three weeks out of the event. Mm -hmm. And we're basically going to be sold out. Yeah. So that shows you there is an appetite in our country for love of country. And Scott, <clears throat> the day will run like this. Uh, we're going to kick it off uh, with a ceremony honoring mm -hmm. uh, heroes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Danny Gokey uh, will be singing the national anthem. He'll end with God Bless America. Uh, we'll honor the different branches of government. We have generals coming. Uh, the we have uh, leaders from the uh, Veteran Affairs Office uh, will be there, other dignitaries. And then uh, we will open up the kids zone. So these kids are going to have an opportunity to play on the field with jumping gyms. And, and that's just going to be a, a blast for them. Uh, Gary Carson uh, voted the number one magician in Vegas last year. Uh, we'll be there entertaining the kids. Uh, and then uh, while that's happening, we have 40 different uh, areas of service that will be inside the corridor area of the stadium, 40. Mm -hmm. And all different types of services for these military families and veterans, counseling and you name it. And then get this, uh, we're going to provide well over $3 million worth of compassion uh, giveaways. So everything from Nike shoes, we're grateful to Nike, uh, Amazon products, 
And uh, Jockey is stepping up, providing a shirt for everybody Good. that's attending. Mm-hmm. So grateful to uh, Deborah Waller and her whole team. And so, and then it's going to culminate with a stage uh, entertainment uh, with the well known uh, headliner, Walker Hayes, and his band. And we will also have Danny Gokey will be singing. We'll have some inspirational moments. And so this is going to be a huge uh, celebration, uh, honoring, and service happening inside Allegiant Stadium on June 8th. What, what was the name of that musician again? Magician? Uh, Gary Carson. C- could we get Gary to cut you in half? That's really, I think that would be a highlight. Oh, well, uh, actually, that's why I had invited you, but uh, but I have I have been trying to get Peter to uh, fly in uh, in a parachute to kind of kick it off. Yeah, and uh, so thus far he's been pushing back on that. But I want to say something here because it's not like this has been easy. Yeah, you know anything you do that's that's big, that's consequential, mm-hmm. that's historic. You're going to get pushback. Mm -hmm. And Peter and I, we've tried to encourage ourselves and the Lord through difficult times. And I said to our team, and you remember this, Peter, I said, you know, this is hard. But you know what's really hard? It's a gold gold star parent that sees a picture of their lost loved one. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. And then... I've had people say, you know, it's awkward asking people to help, to give. No, you know what awkward is, friends? It's somebody that is going to live the rest of their life on prosthetics. Hmm. That's awkward. And so I would just say for all the people that are listening, that are watching, this is time to step up, to pray, to volunteer, to give. And if God can get it through you, he'll give it to you. And this is Hmm. especially the case with serving those that have sacrificially served us with their lives for so many years. Uh, I'd like to add something to what uh, Dave said, which is really compelling. Uh, The veteran community and the military community are the most humble people you'll ever meet. Mm. They ask for nothing. When we approached them about this event, one, they were very grateful we were willing to do this for them. And they asked for nothing. They said, we're fine. Well, they're not fine because when we talked to the generals and the colonels, we were informed that half of them uh, get public assistance. How can you feed a family today if you're a war hero with a missing arm or a missing leg? How can you feed a family today with two and a half thousand a month or three thousand a month disability payment? You can't. Mm. And um, they, so they asked for nothing. And through the, the goodness of City Serve, Dave Donaldson and Wendell Vinson and their leadership, they came forward and said, we'll, we'll get some goods and take care of these families. And uh, through the goodness of God and through the grace of God, we're now at $3 million of goods oh. to give these families. Yeah. Now, that may, when you take uh, $3 million dollars, and divided among 5,000 families, it may not sound like a lot. It's about $600 in goods per family. But when you are barely surviving, yeah. house goods of $500 or a brand new pair of shoes, a Nike shoes for your son, makes a difference. Yeah. And uh, there's something that one of the colonels told me the other day that was very touching. He said that this uh, is one of the, one of the greatest events in military history. Truly, it's the biggest event in the history of Nevada for our military and veteran family. And he said, Peter, there's an unprecedented support and excitement about this event. And here's why. Colonel says, when, when I signed up many years ago to serve our country, I knew what I was signing up for. I served to, I signed up to serve my country. And if necessary, I signed the document that I would even give up my life. But my children and wife did not sign up for that. Mm-hmm. And throughout my career, 
I have been relocated 16 times to 16 different states and countries. And my family's taken a tremendous toll mm -hmm. because my kids have to learn a new school system and new teachers and new friends. And it's been very difficult on them. And this event is God sent because it's mm -hmm. for our children and for my wife. What do you want those heroes that have uh, suffered so much, endured so much, 16 moves, missing limbs? What do you want those heroes to feel as they walk out the doors after this day of gratitude on Jan the 8th? What experience do you want to provide for them, Peter? It's going to be magical. Our, our events centered on uh, country, love of country, and love of God. We, we are not a blue America. We are not a red America. We are a red, white, and blue America. Mm. And what makes our country great is when we stick together as Americans, when we remember our core, when we, we remember our values, when we center our life around God and of, around love of country, it's a beautiful thing. Everybody at that event on June 8th is going to leave that stadium with a great feeling. First of all, they're going to be appreciated. They're going to be thanked for their service. And that gratitude is going to be backed up by a beautiful patriotic event, courtesy of CityServe. We cannot have done this without CityServe. Mm -hmm. I had the vision. I have the love. But CityServe stepped up and is bringing over $3 million of goods for these heroes. And let me say one final thing. We have over 500 people involved in this event, volunteers, givers. Now, one person's making one dollar. One hundred percent of everything we raise, one hundred percent is given to the military and veterans. And that's what makes this a, a very special event. Beautiful. I would also like to add uh, to what Peter really eloquently uh, shared that we are extremely grateful to the Las Vegas Raiders uh, for their generosity, uh, for going the extra mile and not only providing the stadium of uh, food for the guests, uh, security. I mean, it's truly been a remarkable uh, partnership and they, it's indicative. I think of uh, the Davis family. Uh, they are very generous, compassionate people, patriotic people. And we're also grateful to Sandra Morgan, the president, uh, and her team uh, that have really stepped up uh, with the city serve team and a uh, voice of the veterans uh, to really make this a model. And uh, we couldn't be, you know, more grateful and honored uh, to be able to uh, partner with them. So good. And, and people may be interested, Dave, um, just hearing the word city serve. People may be just, what is that about? I hope we put something in the show notes. Uh, people may want to help you help these veterans. And so just a way for people to exercise generosity, um, just to connect with the city serve platform. Want to tell people how to do that? Well, one of our commitments to the Raiders is that we, we're not making this like some big widespread fundraising campaign. Sure. sure. Uh, our, our ask, uh, as you know, Scott, you're on the city serve board along with the producer of, of this podcast, Christiane Debussing, uh, that we've been very surgical, uh, with our, our appeals. And so the the upside of that is that people have been generous hmm. you know with some major donations uh, but we still have a lot to raise we've stepped out uh city serve is covering that and uh i would just say you know go to cityserve.us and you'll see there uh, an opportunity for you to donate and i'm sure there are those that are uh, listening right now that have friends uh, that have significant means that are very patriotic. Mm -hmm. This is a kind of experience and honoring for veterans and these military families that people have been looking to support. Mm -hmm. And so we would just, we deputize you uh, to go to them uh, as an advocate for uh, this event. 
Uh, and we believe, as we said to Mark Davis, uh, Peter, uh, he said, where do you see this going? And we said, Mark, uh, we feel like this can be a model you mm. know, for other sports men, uh, venues. And uh, Mark said, uh, of course it is. That's what, that's what the Davises do. We create models. <laughs> and so uh, this has enormous potential. We don't know, you know where God's going to take it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's a great adventure. Uh, Peter, I was very touched, and it's still in my, can't get it out of my heart, when you said uh, 23 veterans uh, take their lives a day. And uh, it's very possible, listening to this platform, or people that have experienced great PTSD, maybe, maybe battling darkness, dark nights of the soul, could you just say a few words of encouragement uh, to veterans that are listening and veterans' families that uh, we want to honor on the 8th, but we'd like to honor them every day. And could you just speak to that one that may be in a dark night and a family that's going through it today? Um, yes. First of all, I want to tell every veteran out there who served our country, every member who served our National Guard, that we understand you because we have the same DNA. Mm. We understand you because we love, we love you, we love your service, we love your family. And all of us go through dark moments because it's part of living life. Mm. But as Christians, we believe in God and we have faith and we believe in helping each other. And I'll tell you one story that happened last year. I got a call that uh, one of our veterans was uh, gonna take her own life. And uh, I said, how serious is this? And I said, Peter, it's pretty serious. She just said she's gonna shoot herself tonight. What had happened was uh, within that week, uh, this African-American veteran had lost her grandchild, two years old, to a rare disease. And she was the custodian of this two-year-old child. And then her refrigerator went out. And she, the refrigerator was important because that's where she kept her medication because mm -hmm. she had war injuries. And she said, you know, she called one of our leaders and said, I'm done. Yeah. I lost my grandchild. My refrigerator doesn't work. I can't take my medication. Mm -hmm. I'm going to commit suicide. I... Uh, I call that that hero. And uh, told her that we loved her mm. and we understand her. And I said, I can't bring back your, your grandchild. I also have grandchildren. And that's, I don't understand those things. But I can help you by telling you we care about you. Yeah. I'll buy you a refrigerator, and I'll be there tomorrow. And she said, you don't even know me. Why would you do that? And I said, because you served our country. Yeah. And I said, I promise you I'll help you. I'll be there tomorrow. And um, I got some of our military folks, went there the next day, got our beautiful refrigerator. We, we put our arms around her. And when she hugged me, she won't let go. And she said, I'm at peace now because I realize that somebody cares about me. Yeah. I realize that somebody was there for me. And I promise you, Peter, I'm not going to commit suicide. And after she passed that dark moment, she got enrolled in the school. And now she's studying for her master's degree. Wow. So my friends, uh, everything is possible. Yeah. As long as we care about each other, as long as we are there for each other. Yeah. And as Christians, we have a moral duty. We have a way. We have a path. We know how to do this. It's just about being generous, and it's about caring. And this whole thing coming up June the 8th started with two friends sitting in a ball game, dreaming together. What could happen if 
we started dreaming together. What, what are the dreams that God wants to birth through your life? A conversation that you may have listening to this platform, listening to this podcast. We're here to see the influence of your life grow and develop. And you've just seen today in Dave and in Peter, the heart to bring unity to a nation that desperately needs it. I love when Peter said, we are wet, wet. I loved when Peter said, we are red, white, and blue. We need to unify, and what a great cause to unify behind the veterans, honoring the veterans, Day of Gratitude, June the 8th. Dave, is there any closing thoughts you want to bring? I am just really moved by Peter's words, yeah. his story. Yeah. And I would just say that attempt something so big and small. Like just sitting with somebody uh, like this woman, you know, providing a refrigerator, but attempt something so big and so mm -hmm. small that unless God intervenes, you will fail. What a great note. Just think about those words for Dave, Peter, and Scott. This has been the Influencers Podcast. Pray for June the 8th. Pray for the success of June the 8th. And could you also pray for our veterans? God bless America. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Influencers Podcast on the Charisma Podcast Network. If you enjoy our content, we would love for you to subscribe and have the opportunity to tune in to future podcasts. You can follow us on all social media platforms at the Influencers Podcast Official. You can stay up to date, hear more inspiring content, and unlock your full potential as an influencer. Remember to use your influence to create lasting change that draws the world closer to Jesus.